Hey guys, it's Josh Packard. Welcome to another episode of the Golden Image of Churchianity is a Lie. Um, God spoke to me again. Um, and this has been formulating the last couple days, but he just showed it to me right now. It's like I was, I was like circling around it. He's like, oh, right here. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but um, anyway, yesterday I was talking in the video and I was talking to another guy at the gym this morning and talking about that, uh, the, 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 the word of the Lord blaring at you. You know, and, and, and then comparing that, you know, like the word Jesus is the is like the short the short version of like all the all the names of God all put together and we, we short it down into Jesus, right? So, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God of Gods, you know, El Shaddai, you know, you keep going through <clears throat> Jehovah Jireh, you go through all these different names. Kinsman Redeemer, the you know, Prince of Peace, you know, uh, you know, the author of the finisher, you know, you can just keep going through everything and all of the names that who Jesus is. And it's like you bring it down into a simple word, right? And this is Jesus that just encompasses all those words to us, right? Because we know him and we see him as he is. But the big bomb is, is that know what that means? So then all those words, that whole world culminating in Jesus, well, you can't have like a continuous Jesus, Jesus, Jesus sound. The, the horn is the simple sound of Jesus. It's the final trumpet, you guys. We're seeing the final trumpet. It is just the eternal word, just brrrr. And it, it's, it's just, it's just this, the constant singular sound that has been from foundation to foundation. You know what I mean? Every, from eternity past to eternity presence, we hear the last trumpet, you guys. It's what it is. So we have pests from death unto life. We are in the new the the, the, the new millennium. We're in the millennial kingdom. Um, the great tribulation is happening on, on the other side. And as we're being brought to life and we're going from life unto eternal life, they're going from, from de death to the grave. That's where they're going. Um, and we're going up. So we are literally in that time, you guys. We are there. And we are at the last trump, you guys. I mean, it's just crazy. Not the seventh trumpets, the, the but the, the final trump. Um, and it's it's just like the final word. It's the final word that God said. It's the final trumpet. It's a it's the only word that has ever been. It's just the final. And anyway, we can see it now. It's like just like the other day we saw where Satan sits enthroned. I mean, we've seen that for a long time, but we see where Satan sits enthroned, which is in the the he is the abomination that makes desolate. That's the thing that Jesus was showing us in Matthew twenty four. That when you see that, then that's that's when the shit's hitting the fan. Well, in order for us to to be at that time, we'd have to enter into life. The trumpet has to sound. The, everything that that we're seeing is taking place. The, the, all the things that have to be revealed have been revealed. So anyway, God just spoke that to me right now. Um. So um, anyway, so we're going to go back over, uh, let's go through 1 Corinthians 15 again. And I just, with new eyes, okay? I um, mean, we've seen so much in 1 Corinthians 15. It's so deep in there and so life-giving. But there's even something even greater that we didn't realize, or that I didn't at least, you guys might have. But um, as, as putting in the new light of, of how we have seen Jesus as he is, that he is the eternal word. There is no other word. He's the, he's the ultimate authority. He's the ultimate rule, the power. He is the ultimate judge. There is, all judgment goes to him. There's no, nobody below can j judge differently than what he said. No, no other God, no other religion, no other anything can change that eternal word. And we have now looked up at that eternal word. We've looked up from darkness to the light. He's the light that shined, but we didn't see him because we love darkness rather than the light. It's like this constant, um, God is constantly blaring. He's constantly honking that horn i shouldn't say honking but it's the blowing of that horn boo and it's like constantly it is never and that's that's the embodiment of all the names of god being expressed at one time anyway we are there guys this is ridiculous this isn't like i mean anyway i'm just like but anyway let's start over again first corinthians 15 with this new light and um have something fun to do um let's start in just first corinthians 15 1 and let's just with in the view of what we've been seeing over the last i mean just a few days what this is how this this chapter is transforming it is like ridiculous okay more brethren 
I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. See that declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. And so it's it's that gospel that is the eternal word, and that's where we are standing. That's where we are on top of the water. We're outside of light. We're out of condemnation. We pass from death into life. We are no longer dead and dying. We are alive and living. You know, John 5, 24 says, Jesus says that we have no further need of condemnation because we've already passed from death unto life. Anyone that believes in him has passed from death unto life. There's no more need for suffering. No more need for death. You've already passed. Okay? So I want you guys to see here, um, this wherein you stand is it's another level. So we we had the absolute confidence of the, in our spirits already before before we were actually where we had the the quickening of our spirits, but not yet the quickening of our bodies. But we are in the midst of being quickened right now. We are in life unto eternal life. We are being charged right now, for lack of a better word. It's like we're being brought to life from the dead. You guys, it's moment by moment, like being charged, like charging up a. I don't know. It's not really a battery, but it'd be like something you could discharge. You know. By which you are also saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So, so salvation is the opposite of the vanity. So believing in vain, vain would, which would be, which would lead to death, right? So the other side is going to life, right? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And he was seen of Cephas, and then of twelve, of the twelve, and after that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, and of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then all of the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that I am uh, for I am the least of the apostles that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and by in this grace which was disposed upon me was not in vain. See the the living versus death again. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether I was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And so, remember back when he was talking to Mary and Martha, he says that, you know, Martha was like, oh, yeah, I know that you'll raise him up at the last day. And that's that's where we all kind of were, if we were going to be honest. We were putting off this resurrection somewhere into the future, not realizing that he is the resurrection, where he is. If we are beholding him where he is, and as he is, we are in the resurrection, you guys. It's he is the resurrection. And as we behold him, and as we see him as he is, that's where we are being resurrected, you guys. We have entered it. But if there be no resurrection from the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith also is in vain. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified that God of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, and you are yet in your sins. We're not in our sins, we're in life, you guys. They then also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Um, so it's like, what he's saying is that those who have died, they're perished, they're gone, if this isn't true. They're over with. They're they're in the trash can. They're in hell. Gone. To be forgotten forever, right? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So, so then we were included in that sleeping. So there's the, the sleeping that are actually inanimate, and there's those that are walking around sleeping, the dead and dying. Okay? For by, by man came death. Crazy, huh? So this death came by man. Weird. I never really thought about it like that, right? That death is the result of, it came by a man. Death did. So then what what is death other than the separation of God, right? The end of which is the grave, right? 
By man also came the resurrection of the dead. That's not just talking about us. It's talking about them that are asleep well, that we know that after the millennial reign, after the millennial kingdom, there, there will be the resurrection of the dead, both the just and the unjust. But a lot of religious people are going to be, they're not going to realize, they're going to be really surprised when they show up on the resurrection of the unjust. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We've, we've actually stepped into Christ now. We, we have literally put on Christ. We've actually been clothed. We've, we've moved in, put on our new robes. We are no longer dead and dying. We are alive and living, guys. It's moving forward. We are going up. We are being filled with life as we speak. If you're like me, I can sense it. I feel it. I feel energy all day long. I feel this just absolute just filling sensation. I, I feel like I don't need as much sleep. I feel stronger. I feel more alert. I feel, I don't know. Anyway, you can say that that's because it's springtime or whatever, but there, there's something that's taking place. I can feel a change in me. He says, but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he has when he have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So if death came by man, so we now that we accurately understand what death is, and the abolishment of that death is, is life from the dead. But Christ is that life from the dead. Up until this point, we did not behold him as he was because we didn't go whoop and look up at that eternal word. I mean, I like to think that I've been doing it for a while, but honestly, uh, I mean, if I did, it was only spontaneously. Now I understand. We really can see Christ as he is perfectly. We see him and we see his full nature. We see his unchangeability, his infallibility. We see who he is and what his heart is and what his intention is. We see that he's unchanging and yielding. He is the absolute Lord of Lords. We see him as he is. When we were underneath the religions and denominations and Christianity and all these other things, we saw him as we wished he would be. Anyway. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. <laughs> and so if we are under into Christ, we are in Christ, and Christ is subject unto God. So we subject unto him, it's just... It's this whole thing where Christ is in us. So we are in Christ and Christ is in God. When it's like everything's handed up to God now. We are it's where God is all in all. And that's that's that eternal word, you know. Else what shall we do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest or I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not this knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And this is crazy right here. I mean, you know, this awakening to righteousness. It's simply the matter of the awakening. Awakening to righteousness. The word, it, so like when Jesus came up out of the water, when he was baptized, and straightway he heard, Behold my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That is the eternal trumpet sound, you guys. It's the final trumpet. <clears throat> Thou fool, that which you sow... Um, is not quickened except it die and that which you sow you sow not that body that it shall be but bare grain and if other chance of wheat or some other grain but God gives it a body as it has pleased him and to every seed his own body all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh and another 
uh, of, of, of men, of, another of flesh and beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another of the glory of the stars, for one star is different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So that quickening spirit is... is anyway, it's quickening you. Bringing, it's the resurrecting. It's what it is, the resurrecting spirit. Life. That's what it is. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was blah, 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 blah. how be it was not that which was first spiritual, but that which was natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord, is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly. And so, as the reason we are as the heavenly is because we, we put our face where Christ put his face. We acknowledge that eternal word. Nothing that there's the world has nothing in us. We are it has nothing on us. There there's no there's nothing there. You know, when Satan was going to the cross and he said, Satan has nothing on me. Nothing. And that's where we're at. With Satan has nothing on us. Anyway, we are heavenly in the fact that we we put our eyes to the heavenly kingdom. We shows our citizenship where it is. It is no longer here of the earth and the dead and the dying. It is of the live and living, yes. Um, and as we have borne the image of the earthly we shall also bear the image of the heavenly now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither does corruption inherit incorruption and this is where I want to kind of get you behold I show you mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. We are that generation, guys. We are the victorious ones. We are the ones that are swallowing up death. Jesus is showing us how. It's just the same way that he did it, which is obedience to the absolute eternal word. Just crazy. So simple. The word is our life. The word is our light. The word is our water, our bread. Because Christ is the bread, the water, the light, the life. I mean, everywhere you put it, I mean, you just keep ascribing it, ascribing it, ascribing it. And the, the easiest way is when we just hear that horn, we know what it means. And so... We, we're saying Jesus is not as efficient as just the, bah, you know, and as we understand that as that horn, that eternal word that goes from, from forever past to forever future, absence of time. I mean, it's just, anyway, we are a part of this, you guys. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the sting, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that's just not, it's not just vestigial. This is the truth. Whatever you're, you're in life, going on to life, you guys, you and your loved ones. This is, every day the Lord is speaking to me now. It's, it's more than ever, you guys. It's just... Anyway, I know he's doing the same thing to you guys. But uh, the last trump is it's just the eternal trump. It's the, it's the final word of God. It's just it, it's what it is. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. See how you're feeling. Um, I'm just gonna, that's all I wanted to say today. So anyway, you guys have a, an amazing time and, and, and 
you know, check me if you think I'm wrong. But I just, everywhere I see it, it's just this reaffirmation that everything is pointing, everything is pointing to the eternal word as being the, the induction into life. That we can see it. That we can see Satan sitting on the throne. We, it's all revealed to us that we've passed from death to life, you guys. Let me go to, you guys give me a second. I'm going to go to John 5. Um, just so you guys can read it too, 524. I just want to kind of, the Gospel of John. And this verse is always stuck in my head, and I don't, you know what I mean? And it's just, and it's like now I kind of understand what it is. Now I think I know what finally it is. Um, it's like there's ones, those verses like 1230, you know, where it says, If I be lifted up, I'll dream. Anyway, so John 524. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Woo! For as the Father has life in himself, so that it, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that un have done evil unto the resurrection of the damnation. <laughs> um, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears witness of me, and I know that witness which he witnesses, witnesses of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John, for the works of the Father, which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. <clears throat> you have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and you have not his word abiding in you. For whom, um, whom he has sent, him you believe not. Search the scriptures for him, you think that you have the eternal life in them. And they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him shall you receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Do you do not think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Anyway, super cool. And this is the point right before he goes and feeds the 5,000 again, which I was wanting to get here the other day. But anyway, <clears throat> this is just way deeper. And I mean, everywhere I go now, it's just complete affirmation that life from the dead. He is life. His love is life. It's everything is result in that way. Keeping our eyes upon him is life. Being able to escape from death is, is the result of entering into life. That we were able to see back and see that we were in the shackles of death. That we could see all religion where Satan sits enthroned, where we can see everything. That it's like we've we've it's it's the evidence that we're already here. And the fact that we are absolutely confident in our spirits that we are the sons of God. That we can see that we are the priesthood, that we are all these things. This is just these are all evidence that that we're there, you guys. Um, I don't know. It's just crazy. Life is going to swallow up death. The life in you is going to swallow up that death. You're you're putting on incorruption right now. It's unreal, you guys. It's anyway. Anyway, just let me know what you think. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful, blessed evening. And uh, man, that eternal word stands. All right. See you guys.